Welcome to Godly Grind. Let this moment be a reminder that you are loved, important, and created for a purpose bigger than yourself. This safe place was created to help you on your journey in your God-given purpose. Get ready to listen to entrepreneurs, learn from their stories, and apply that wisdom to your godly grind. I'm your host, Kaylin. Grab a pen because this is about to be good. Thank you so much for coming on. Of course. Thank you for having me. I want to welcome you to Godly Grind. Uh, This is a place where we talk about entrepreneurship and we talk to entrepreneurs that have perseverance, drive, and also a love of God because we want to truly figure out how does God equate in your big plan of success or the success you've already achieved. So Ms. Demetria, she is the owner of Michigan Premier Cleaning, Madison Will Clothing, the Forte Collection, the Forte Beauty Collection as well. So she's a super busy bee and we're really happy <laughs> to have you on. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. You are welcome. Our topic today is stepping out on faith, walking into uncharted territory with knowledge and the power of God. Bow your heads and close your eyes. All right, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today saying thank you so much for life, health, wealth. Thank you for another chance. God, it's okay to not be okay. And I want to ask you for strength and power to get to the next day. Help us figure out this life we have. And if we can't figure it out, help us through it to the best way you know how to. Um, God, give us wisdom. And we want to thank you for that extension of power, love, grace that you give us each and every day. Help us tap into it each and every day. We love you. In Jesus' name, this I pray. Amen. Amen. I do want to switch gears and talk more about your uh, corporate experience because I feel like a lot of college students, um, their goal is to work corporate, you know, and of course, God's goal for a lot of people is to work corporate, right? Because, you know, these big businesses and big machines can't run themselves, right? And right. these machines are blessing households each and every day with, you know, checks or perks, bonuses, all types of great stuff. Um, to all of the future corporate babes out there, what should they be looking forward to? The good and the bad. So basically like the climate and the culture of corporate. I would definitely say the good is there's a lot there's a lot of good that comes into it because when you're in a corporate position you're not necessarily being I know my experience I'll speak off my experience I wasn't being micromanaged you know as you would in maybe like a a sales associate position or anything like that like I wasn't being micromanaged my ideas were welcomed I was able I was actually like treated as an adult in the work environment sometimes you're not treated as although you are an adult you know in certain positions and certain work environments you're not treated that way and in my position I was I was blessed beyond measure you know with this position and you know I was able to travel and just do like a lot of things that I hadn't done before but I would say the good was yeah the good was the traveling the your the pay is better you know the benefits and things like that are better just the environment it was just it made you feel like wow I worked hard to get here I went I climbed the ladder you know I had to do what I had to do and it makes all of those you know part-time sales associate and waitress and jobs or whatever it is that you had to do to get there it makes it all worth it because it doesn't stop there but it you know that's where obviously where climbing the ladder for real for real starts but it definitely it just makes everything worth it your voice is being heard and I know this isn't always the case but for me you know my voice is being heard I was actually you know a part of a team that were welcoming my ideas I was learning a lot as well you know not a lot that I learned within that position I was able to take it and implement that into my businesses as well and it's just it was just it was very freeing experience the downside is competition was kind of heavy not necessarily competition but I would say starting out in the entry level corporate position you're all trying to work your way up to being you know the uh, buyer and in, in everything and you're you're trying to get to those to the to that point but and there's going to be people that are going to the people I would say more so not necessarily like the competition but it was people like trying to come in and trying to really like take away the joy that you were feeling you know because they wanted 
the same they were going after the same thing you're going after you know so it was I guess it was a competition they're going after the same thing that you're going after and there are some people that just weren't the most honest the most genuine they weren't really necessarily like really great people but that's what you have to remember I worked hard to get here. I worked my butt off to get here. I did all those things. I worked all those part-time jobs. I, you know, got through college. I did all of that stuff to get to where I am. And I'm not going to let this person stop me. I was faced with, you know, a few people that were negative, a few people that were, that maybe didn't give credit where it was due, you know, that would maybe take credit for certain things that I was, that I, maybe a project that we were working on collectively, but they kind of took complete credit for it or you know and but I didn't allow those things to like destroy my spirit or anything I still went to work every day with a positive spirit positive mindset and happy to be there you know even in times where I weren't the I wasn't the happiest I still like kind of like forced myself to be happy to be there so I would say like just go into any position that you're given and try to learn as much as you can learn from it because it will prepare you for that corporate position all of those jobs that I had all of the management positions that I had all of the you know doing all of the things that I did they prepared me for to get to that point of being in that corporate position so definitely don't take those part-time jobs lightly take them seriously because you can learn something from it you know whatever you can learn from those jobs you'll be able to implement those into your corporate position definitely definitely you are African American, black, right? You you you're part of the black the black folk, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, representation for any minority uh, gets a little slim when you're climbing up the ranks of success or progression, which is mm-hmm. sad. Uh, but of course, that could yeah. be a whole another whole another conversation in itself. Like in college, I was the only black girl in a lot of my classes. Mm-hmm. So were you the only black? the only or one of the black people in corporate and how did that affect the way you moved in corporate America? I wasn't the only one but there's very few of us there's very few of us and although that was it's kind of that that does suck that there wasn't that many of us that we were like outnumbered you know by everyone else but it did strengthen the relationship that I built with those few people of color that were in there. And it was kind of like, I see you, you see me, you know, like I'm not in this alone. I really honestly going into it. That's what I thought would be the case. I would be the only, you know, person of color within the company. And I absolutely was not. There was very few, but there was enough to make me feel like, wow, I'm not here alone. I'm not here by myself. What was the other part of the question? How did it affect the way that you made decisions or did it drive you to come to work on time or did it drive you to to go over and beyond because you felt like you were representing a a group of people absolutely I definitely felt like I had to although I wasn't the only one I still had I couldn't do what the next person was doing so if they were coming into work late and they were you know slacking or they were doing certain things I wasn't going to allow that to be the representation that we have. Um, So I did get to work, you know, I did my best (laughs) to get to work, you know, 10 minutes early to be on time, to be prepared, to be, you know, when I'm going into meetings, I'm not going into meetings blindsided. I'm going in prepared. I'm going in knowing, you know, knowing the topic, knowing what we're going through, going over everything uh, that I need to know and just really being prepared for my job, you know, working my hardest and really not um, giving any room for, I wouldn't say for error because I am human, but really just working my hardest and really not doing it to prove a point, but also doing it to, to raise the standard, you know, because I feel like the standard may have been low you know, or the, not, not necessarily low, but the, the standard may have just been a little different for me versus someone who doesn't look like me. So I did what I had to do, not only to fulfill a purpose within my job, but my purpose in this world as a Black woman is to represent us. You know, I had to go out and I had to represent and had to do what I had to do and I, not to, so they can look at us like, oh, wow, she, you know, she's working hard. Black women work hard. Like, I'm not doing it for validation from them. It was just a simple fact that you're you're not gonna paint this picture or this image of me, um, Basically. that I'm not. You know, to be something that I'm not. You know, yeah. So, so yeah. So that was pretty. I pretty much went into every 
you know, every day I, I went into work and I, I did, I worked hard, you know, and it was because that's what I do, but also, you know, you're going to see this black woman, <laughs> you know, in here showing up and showing out too, period. That's what you gotta know. That's what <laughs> you gotta know. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Because if you haven't heard, you know, African-Americans have to work twice as hard, especially yeah. if you're a woman. Um, because oh, yeah. you know, we have two the two strikes against us right the color and then the the gender so yeah. we have to work twice as hard so I was just really interested in in your position when it came to corporate to that person or that child or yeah it could be a 30 40 year old person could you possibly give them some advice on how to break into corporate America especially if they don't really know you know where to start I would tell them to, in addition to their, you know, maybe jobs that they already have worked, um, to intern. Internships are a great way to get your foot in the door with certain companies. Um, And even if it's not with that particular company, then you can have that internship experience that will get your foot in the door with another company. You know, just working hard, really working hard in every position that you're put in, but also intern and just going for it really is there's really like no I feel like there's really no right or wrong answer to this it's just kind of you intern you work hard you do what you have to do and I mean you'll be able to work your way up from there definitely yeah I feel like a big culprit to the progression of us and us not getting where we need to go are ourselves simply stated because of course we have that fear we have that doubt we have those those things that aren't really even real you know, it's, it's kind of just cultivated by our mind and comparisons and things like that. But I feel like you might just be in your own way when it comes to working corporate. So I feel like the first step is just believing that you can. Crossing all your T's, dotting all your I's. Yeah, and sometimes it's networking. Networking is a huge part of it because although the, maybe I've networked and I've met people that didn't necessarily work within that company, but they're still good references to have I can always you know the celebrity stylist that I worked with I can literally like I've grown closer to him to the point where I can like call him right now like hey what you doing you know like and I need this you know um letter of recommendation for this position I'm applying for he's a credible source you know network within uh an environment of credible the skill with credible sources you know doing that networking is very a very big part of of working your way up especially with if you're trying to work your way up within a corporate within a corporate environment yeah it's very important too yeah and networking is is simply that building a community just in a professional manner you know like going to church is is networking too if if you want to like compare it but it's just in a more spiritual sense so yeah we go, we go to church, right. To meet people and learn from people, but in corporate world, consider uh, looking up those groups on Facebook or joining, you know, groups in college or, you know, simply hitting somebody up on Instagram. Yeah. Like, Hey, can we have a coffee sit down? As, as soon as the world <laughs> open up, like, yeah. Can we have a coffee sit down? I would love to talk to you and get some advice. Um, I am a student and, yeah. and who doesn't love helping a student. <laughs> like, like, I can't, you know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once they receive this job, right, you already said that you work really hard, you show up and show out uh, when you were in that corporate position. But how do you think the person should maintain the job after they've received it? By just remembering your why, you know, why you're there, your reason why you're there and your purpose, you know, you want to work up, you eventually want to be in a higher position. So every day going, even though, even on your hardest days going in and just, just telling yourself, like, it's just the day, it's just the moment, you know, like this isn't, you know, I always tell myself, this isn't my final destination, you know, that even though you're in an entry level position or whatever the case may be, you know, you're not going to be there forever. You're not going to be stuck there forever. Stepping into each day with the same mindset that you started out with. So when you wanted that job, that drive and that motivation and, you know, that, that hunger in it that you had within you that got you in that position, you have to keep that every single day and you have to continue to work hard to be better than you were the day before. And you have to continue to, you know, outshine who you were yesterday outshine your your work from last week you know outshine you know all of that and continue to just work to be a better you every single day and just continue to remember that you eventually want to be in a 
different position in a higher position and a better position and continue to keep that in your mind in the back of your mind when you're facing maybe the not so easy days and just continuing to just work through those and also just you know working your hardest doing your best doing what you have to do in order to get to the next level definitely I love that I love that I feel like you could also equate that to uh your self-worth so Mm -hmm. if you if you truly value yourself you always want to grow and and become the best you can be for yourself and also others around you but as it relates to a job or or corporate corporate America I feel like young adults coming out of college and trying to get into corporate America or those that that are on the cusp of becoming Mm -hmm. a part of corporate America when it comes to money and negotiation of pay when it comes to entry level in corporate America. Could you speak to that person? Because I do feel like companies need to value their workers Absolutely. when it comes to corporate America. And being that that person might be new entry level in corporate America, they might not know how much they should be getting paid. Are they low balling or are they high balling? So what's some advice to that person that's joining corporate America, but doesn't really know how much they should be getting paid or how they should negotiate their salary okay per- this is like the perfect question this is another um another god moment I had um while I was living and working in New York I um was working as a store manager at some point and eventually like I was just kind of getting to the point where like okay like you can feel when it's time to step into the next chapter of your life so I felt like my time was up you know within that position and it was time for me to move on to something greater and so I would I was like praying and I was just talking to God and I was just like listen I want uh like I think that now is the time for me to like step up like I have to like level up at this point and I wanted to make a certain amount of money and I wanted to um I wanted to work in a you know I was working in Brooklyn but I wanted to I wanted a a job corporate job in Manhattan like I really wanted a corporate job in Manhattan and I was really determined to like get that and so I prayed on it and I'm like if it's in God's plan for me it'll happen but I made my request known to God this is what I want this is the list of things that I want help me to continue to work hard toward obtaining those things and you know we'll go from there but uh yeah this is another time that God showed up and showed out because everything on my list plus some I received you know I wanted a job that allowed me to travel I was traveling for work I wanted a job that paid me a certain amount of money and I was you know he literally went above and beyond for me in that area and um you know just everything it was a corporate position I wanted a corporate position he blessed me with a corporate position um and he it was a job in Manhattan (laughs) you know so I was I got the job in Manhattan and it was the commute was like amazing that was a huge that's a huge thing for New Yorkers the commute (laughs) like I'm not I would like you know that was a huge thing for me was I'm not commuting more than you know 45 minutes on the train you know that was like a walk in the park if you can get a 45 minute train ride um but yeah so that was like a really huge thing for me that so I had a list of things that I wanted to go through that I wanted um and God literally met every one of those things on my list and so when I went into like my job interview and I I knew how much I wanted to get paid I knew what I was worth because I worked really hard you know leading up to that point I worked hard in every position that I was given and um you know so when it was time for me to finally transition into my corporate position I went into the interview and I went into you know and I went in there with knowing my worth it's really knowing your worth knowing what you are worth and you know it's just a matter of are they going to pay you your worth if they're not maybe that's not the job for you you know don't sometimes you know they say like just get your foot in the door but I would just say don't settle if you know that you're worth however much it is that you that you that you're asking for if you know that's what you're worth if you know that you've put in the work you've done what you had to do and you absolutely know that you're not going to settle for anything less than what you want don't settle absolutely do not settle and if they try to give you an offer (laughs) that's below what you want to get paid um, I mean, that's up to, you know, that's up to you to take it or not. But I definitely 
went into that interview with my mindset and when they asked what was my desired salary, I let them know what my desired salary was. And either they were going to accept that or they weren't. So yeah. what was your desired salary? Dang, Kayla. So personal. <laughs> Bro, say it. Some people know. Like, oh, okay, should I get paid 10000 or 80000 You know what I'm saying? No, I knew that I wasn't like making six figures in an entry level <laughs> corporate position. Like, you know, that's why I would say also do your research. You know, do your research with the position that you're applying for. I would say that's that's what I could say. Do your research with as far as like the position that you're applying for and the pay for that position within that company. And also you can view like maybe their competitors. I did entry level merchandise allocation analyst. So I, I Googled the, <laughs> um, I knew what I wanted to be paid, but I Googled how much does a merchandise allocation analyst, you know, entry level position pay. And that's kind of like, I just kind of like negotiated with myself. Okay, this is what you want. This is how much they pay. What are you willing to, are you willing to, you know, like, are you willing to like lower it a little bit? Or do you feel like you need to stick to what you're, what you're sticking to? And I stuck to the amount that I wanted to get paid and they offered me more, you know, they all, there's always like a range, you know, there's always a range of, you can make 40 to 55,000 or whatever the case may be. And you could say you wanted to make 50,000, but they offer you more, you know? So it's just kind of do your research and know your worth and know that if you have a strong work ethic and you know you want to get paid 55,000 and they're trying to offer you like 30,000 no because you know you're not worth it you know you're you're worth more than that so yeah know your worth do your research because <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to get to the numbers you know because some people think that twenty thousand dollars is a whole lot of money like to make in a year like 35 is a whole lot of money to make in a year you know no and then others think like, oh yeah, 80,000, that's no money. But to some people yeah. like 80,000, 80, yeah. uh, that's a nice penny. So, okay. Okay. Well, yeah, for corporate 30,000 a year and, and no go, no go. And um, yeah, but definitely do your research. So type it in on Google, of course, but what websites, like what were your top, top three websites that you were going to, to find out how much you need to be getting paid or to prepare you for that conversation? Um, there's a website called uh, glassdoor.com and there's literally like an entire, you can like type in the name of a company. So let's say, mm, we'll say like Calvin Klein for an example, for example. So Calvin Klein, you type in Calvin Klein and then literally like salaries will pop up or, um, reviews and pros and cons of working with this company benefits. So many different things will come up. So glassdoor.com was definitely helpful when I was like on my, journey to work in a corporate position um just because I really didn't know how much I should have been making I knew how much I wanted to but I didn't know how much I should have been making working you know going into a corporate position like I could have been asking for less than what I could have been making you know and if you ask if if the job is starting out at 70,000 a year or something and you ask for 50,000 you think that I mean they could be honest and give you the, you know, the, the, um, 70,000, but also you think they're not going to give you $50,000 if you're asking for, I don't know if that's exactly how it goes. I'm not, you know, I'm not, uh, head of HR or anything like that, or, you know, payroll, but I do know that like, if you go into a position, if you go into, um, you know, a job interview or job search and you're looking for something, definitely you don't want to lowball yourself. You know, so um, I went on Glassdoor.com and I just kind of like did my research on the company that I was applying for, um, did my research on the pay and, you know, just kind of went from there. Mm, I love it. I love it. Okay. So that corporate transition to entrepreneurship, you already mentioned it definitely. Was that challenging or not so much? It was challenging for me. Um, I think it was more of an emotional challenge for me because I was just like living in New York, living my dream. You know, I wanted to live in New York since I was like eight years old. So for me to have been there and to have had that experience and then, you know, like God is calling me, is is I don't know, say calling me back home, but yeah, calling me back home. <laughs> God was calling me back home and it was just kind of like a really emotional struggle for me. Although I knew like, this was a part of God's plan for me. And I knew that this was 
meant to happen and I needed to make this move and take these steps in order to get to where I wanted to be it was still hard for me emotionally to like leave this place that you know I created this whole new life for myself you know but um ultimately I knew that I needed to do what I had to do and I had to follow God's lead with this one so it wasn't challenging and so many other areas as it was emotionally like I was really like I had an emotional attachment because of all of the growth and character development that I went through in New York I was emotionally attached to New York so it was kind of like a an emotional struggle for me to to adjust to being you know to this completely different different life Mm -hmm. so although I was excited about being an entrepreneur and living that dream I was also leaving behind another dream to start a new one I like that oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that I like that I like that <laughs> yeah yeah so now you're an entrepreneur and the owner of four businesses so mm-hmm. take your time because we definitely want to hear about how each one was formed initially my cleaning business was something that I just kind of did for like some extra money extra you know like on the weekends type of thing and I actually started in New York but it wasn't really as successful just because I had a whole lot of other stuff going on. So it was just kind of like, it was, it was like more of a side hustle for me than it was an actual business venture. And then I moved home and I, you know, I obviously had more time to commit to that. It was something that in the back of my mind, I eventually wanted to turn into something full time, but I just didn't really have the time to do so in New York. So moving back to Detroit gave me the opportunity to do that. Madison Will, I'm a designer at heart, <laughs> a creative. So of course that is, that is my, my, like my baby. So of course I wanted to be a designer and I wanted to start, you know, my own clothing line and everything. So that was already, that was always something that was within me, you know, within my heart to, to pursue. As far as the Forte collection, you know, I love like accessories I love jewelry and so I always thought like it would be really cool really dope for me to have like my own like you know um, accessories line but I didn't think like personalized so that was like something that was like god-given you know that idea I thought that was like oh that's real cool you know like that's that's something different than what I would have imagined myself doing so that was like that that's kind of where that stemmed from and then um, Forte Beauty Collection that's coming soon so I can't really say too much about that right now that's another like god-given you know idea how did you develop the name forte oh every okay so forte madison wheel and michigan premier cleaning these are all names that i literally prayed on i literally prayed on it um forte was just placed on my heart and i'm like what is like if you look it up look up forte it basically it means something that you specialize or excel in like that's my forte you know (laughs) Um, so I just thought that was like really cool, really dope. It was placed on my heart and I was just kind of like, what does this even mean? Like you hear it, you know, like that's my forte or whatever. And I'm like, okay, what is it? What exactly does this mean? So I just Googled it and I was like, wow, that's super dope. So, um, so yeah, so these are things that I love. They, these are things that I'm passionate about. So I feel like, yeah, this is, this name is perfect. I like that. I like yeah. That a lot. Okay. They're all definitely God given, though. God placed these names on my heart, and I just kind of took that and ran with it. Right, right, right. Okay. So now that you have built these companies, these businesses in the past year, you said, right? Mm-hmm. Started about a year ago. Yep. So, what are some challenges you faced when becoming an entrepreneur, starting these companies? Doubt you kind of like have like a lot of doubt, like, oh my God, what if this doesn't work out? What if this doesn't go as planned? Like, what if it's not successful with my cleaning business? I'm like, what if I don't get clients? That was like a huge thing, like getting out there and like finding, like getting clients, you know, like uh, for my business and just kind of like, okay, I got, I have my first client. Like, what if I don't get another one? what if I don't make any sales with you know my online business or you know like so it's always like that doubt or like that what if like what if this doesn't happen what if this does what if this happens you know like what if you know just like there's just a lot of what ifs and it's really like a lot of like fear but 
that's where your faith has has to come in like god gave you that vision so he's going to provide you with the clients he's going to provide you with the customers he's you know he's going to provide you with everything that you need in, in order for your businesses to succeed right do you have a plan because you did say that you know and and i feel like that's that's evident like faith without work is dead so when you said that you need to meet god halfway that's your work. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the faith that God is going to come up with his other half should take you all the way, you know? So do you have a plan in place that you've built with God to gain more clients or? Oh, yeah, definitely. So obviously, you know, running a business, there are certain things that you have to do in order to profit, to see a profit and you have to put in the work. So I made a deal with God. I'm going to do this, <laughs> you know, provide me with the necessary tools and resources in order to get to where you want me to be and where you want my businesses to be and to reach the level of success that you see fit for me when God, you know, is doing his part, obviously I'm doing my part. So I'm networking and I'm, you know, you know, you have to create your social media platforms and your websites and all the other stuff and, and get your word out and, you know, do those things to the best of your ability. And I feel like for me, doing those things and actually like working hard when I'm actually like working with clients, you know, actually let it allow my work to be proof that, you know, I'm doing my, I'm doing my part on my end, you know, with as far as like meeting God halfway. So I'm doing my part on my end. I'm I'm putting in the work. I'm doing the things that I have to do and, you know, allowing God to lead me down the level of the, down the road of success that he has set for me. And me being an entrepreneur, I did start my business about a year ago. And you do need to make a plan to the best of your ability to meet God halfway. With me and my business, promotion is is very important. I feel like promotion, Mm -hmm. just to just to give you a couple nuggets for your business. So you can succeed, of course, take it to God first. But listening to God is really big. Promotion is really big and being consistent with that. And Mm -hmm. so much so that even if you feel like someone isn't looking or watching or liking your pictures, still post it. Yeah. Like, the more you post, the bigger your catalog will be. And then you can consider your Instagram as a portfolio of some sort to prove yeah. like, okay, yes, my business does, you know, create clothes. We have this aesthetic. Um, you can then build out brand images and things of that nature on these free social media platforms. So mm-hmm. That could definitely be your first step in your plan of making sure that your business is in the position, the best position it could be in to succeed for sure. And then of course, you know, with, with that free promotion of just being consistent and posting on your own, you can uh, enhance your post by uh, paying for, for Mm -hmm. advertisement through Facebook and Instagram. So that's something you also can consider, but definitely create a budget okay, okay. <laughs> create a budget and well, that's where having a business plan comes in comes into play you know and utilizing those when I like pray and ask God to provide those resources he's provided those resources so, social media is everything you know right now like social media you can literally sell anything you know on social media. like you, social media is definitely um you know instagram and facebook those platforms are definitely used i feel like you they can be used for good and they can also be used for you know not so good but definitely use those to your advantage take full advantage of the opportunity that you have to post on your social media to your you know even if it's just a few hundred followers because when you're sharing something to that one person you never know who it can end up you know someone can share it to someone else's dms or tag someone in it or you know screenshot it and send it to someone you never know where it can end up so definitely utilize that's a huge resource to utilize for, um, you know during this time of technology and everything for sure yeah yeah and definitely do your research when it comes to posting and boosting your post you yeah. know of course it's an algorithm to it all you know it's data at the yeah. end of the day. it's like okay, when is the best time to post or when is the best time to post for your page or, yeah. um, you know, how should I find my audience? So all of those things definitely do your research because it's the science behind marketing and advertisement. That's why businesses spend millions upon millions to advertise. Mm-hmm. Super Bowl, I think one minute 
costs probably, I don't know. I don't know if it's a million dollars for a minute, but it's something very extreme like that. And that's literally advertisement. They know that millions upon millions of people are watching the Super Bowl. So, okay, let's get on. Like, let's get on to, <laughs> to that so they can see our brand. So really important. So definitely consider that when building out your plan, consider that budget. And of course, consider the product because I feel like all of those aspects when working together then makes a successful business Um, because you can't have a terrible product and then amazing marketing. People just, people just not want to see that. Just having a great balance of budgeting and advertisement and marketing and all of those great things, having a great product as well, that will catapult your business to success. Definitely. And I read a quote from Elon Musk and it basically said, you need to create a 10 year plan, but then act like you only have a couple years to complete it. Like literally go after it, you know, like Mm -hmm. once you hear from God, once you, once you have that vision, have that step, like literally go after it. And then he said, uh, nine times out of 10, you're going to fail. Like you're not going to hit your goal, but you're going to be way closer than you thought. So now I would love to talk about your future. So uh, I love asking people like, what's your overarching purpose in life? My purpose is to have freedom, you know, to have freedom in every aspect of my life, to live a life of pure happiness pure joy so I can't say like I I can see where I want Madison Will to be in five years 10 years I love to have brick and mortar in you know every major city in a country you know but ultimately I want true peace true happiness and I want that happiness and that peace to come from God so if God says Madison Will was a nice run but that ain't you know, your final desk, that, that ain't the final destination I have for you. That's not, you know, ultimately what I have for you. But um, my goals for Madison Will is to be, to be huge, to be on the level of Coco Chanel, you know, like I want to be on her level, <laughs> you know, like I want the, you know, larger than life, you know, I would love for, you know, my cleaning business to continue to grow and, you know, for that to be something that I will be able to leave behind for, you know, my family, I would love for the Forte collection to be bigger and larger than life. Um, these are all things that I want, but ultimately my, end goal is to want what God wants for me so I do want these things to be great and I want these things to be really really big which I know they are um but ultimately whatever God wants for me I'm cool with yeah yeah love that love that yeah yeah yeah. so you did say a couple of your goals for the Madison wheel in 15 years you would love a brick and mortar where do you see your other businesses or just you personally where do you see yourself in 15 years? In 15 years? Oh, that's... Right? And it's so hard <laughs> to think of. I'm like, so hard to think of. I could do like maybe like five years. Three I know, years, no, four, four years. years. 15, you got to say 15, 15, 15. I see myself in 15 years just running an empire, literally running an empire, married with children, and, you know, just living a really amazing life you know family well taken care of everything and just really living a really happy peaceful life honestly and a happy peaceful and successful life whatever that success may look about look like for you know for God I'm all for it definitely yeah 15 years that's a that's a hard one that's a stretch I'm like yeah yeah I, I it's hard for me to answer truthfully um because what I'm gonna be what for 35 no maybe 40 40. (laughs) 15 years yeah no 15 years definitely I would love for my brick and mortar let's have my brick and mortars and you know one in New York one in LA you know one in uh I would love to have one in uh Detroit for sure um that's why I would love to have my first one <laughs> uh for sure in Detroit um but yeah 
I would love for like to for my my designs to be you know showcased um, during like Milan Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week, and all of that. So definitely, I want it to be there. Like I would love to be like the Anna Wintour, <laughs> um, you know, of 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 like my my uh, my time, you know. So yeah, definitely, we'll get there. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see it. Yes. Okay. So. What are the next steps for your businesses? Are we launching any new products? Should we look out and look forward to, to something new? What's, what's the tea? Give us some tea. <laughs> some tea. Uh, definitely uh, Forte Beauty Collection, for sure. Look out for that. Um, I can't say exactly what it is right now, but you will see. And definitely look out for Madison Will because it's still in the works. I'm taking my time with this one because this is my baby <laughs> um I've been working on Madison Will for a long time so definitely look out for Madison Will something really really special uh coming from that and yeah Forte uh collection and Michigan Premier Cleaning they're still growing still going strong I'm not even a full I think I'm like six months in into you know under full-time entrepreneurship so definitely fun it's a journey but definitely keep supporting yeah. <laughs> and, and just look out yeah Definitely, definitely. Oh, well, thank you so much again for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It's been lit. <laughs> but, yeah. but no, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for helping me out. Give me those words of wisdom and encouragement throughout my journey. And Absolutely. I really do appreciate it for sure, for sure. Of course. This has been a great episode. I know you learned a lot, just like I learned a lot. Absolutely. If you have any questions for me in regards to business entrepreneurship god christianity you know please dm me you can also dm demetria as well we aren't afraid we don't bite and if we don't know then of course you know we'll send you some resources or send you somewhere else that might be better equipped to answer those questions yeah absolutely yeah, so we, we're just here to help. And that's really the premise of this podcast, you know, to help you, to help you on your entrepreneurship journey and pointing to God along the way. Thank you once again. And this has been another episode of Godly Grind. We're checking out and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Godly Grind. It was so amazing talking to Demetria about corporate life as a corporate bay. She really dug deep into her transition into becoming an entrepreneur. Her life looks really different right now, but she gave us nuggets of wisdom for people that are interested in corporate America and for the people that are walking into entrepreneurship. We talked about marketing, advertising, and also the importance of staying consistent. This episode was super exciting, but I know you're looking forward to next week's episode next week we will be talking to tamar now tamar she's a believer of christ but she also has an amazing women empowerment brand that is also christ based we dig deep in mental illness and also the ups and downs she goes through in being an entrepreneur so stay tuned for that episode remember like comment share and subscribe Lastly, I love you and I'll see you in the next episode.